Okay, so today we're going to be going over section 7.1, which is the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent functions. So let's go back and think about chapter 5 where we talked about inverse functions. When we talked about inverse functions, we knew that a function had to be 1 to 1. So let's remember what that means. 1 to 1 meant that it passed the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. If I graph y equals sine of x, if I were to graph y equals sine of x, the domain <coughs> is all real numbers. But the range was only from negative 1 to 1. And that function, that sine wave, that, that curve that we're so used to seeing, is not going to be a one-to-one -one function. In other words, it passes the vertical line test, but it fails the horizontal line test. So in order to make it one-to-one, -one, what we had to do was we have to restrict the domain. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to restrict the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And the reason that we're doing that, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pencil in a little bit more of the graph. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and show you a graph of the sine function. Here we have a graph of the sine function. If you look at this, see how it fails the horizontal line test kind of all over the place? But if we were to continue this graph, we could draw it to where it was continuing on like this. Sorry, I have this dot in the wrong spot. That it was continuing on like this and the graph would just kind of continue to keep going, right? Well, what if I took this graph and I cut it from negative 90 degrees or negative pi over 2 to positive 90 degrees or positive pi over 2? When you look at that, do you recognize that that portion of the graph from negative 90 degrees to 90 degrees or negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is a one-to-one -one function? So look, when I cover up the rest of the graph, that function is now one-to-one. -one. That piece passes the vertical line test as well as passing the horizontal line test. So we're going to limit the domain of our sine function. We're going to take this and we're going to limit it from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And uh, I want you to remember back, think about where negative pi over 2 is on the unit circle. Negative pi over 2 means to move in a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees or the bottom of the circle. And the sine value there is negative 1. The sine value at negative pi over 4, which is in quadrant 4, is going to be negative root 2 over 2. The sine value of 0 is 0. The sine value of positive pi over 4 is positive root 2 over 2. And the sine value of pi over 2 is 1. So I'm going to graph that on here. We're going to have... <coughs> Let's, let's call this 1 right here, and let's call this negative 1 right here. And I'm going to label from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, and I'm going to plot my points. And that's going to give me here, here, and here. And let's see, that's about 0.86. No, that's about 0.7, so that's be about right there and right there. So my graph is kind of going to look like that, right? So that is the sine function with a restricted domain, and the range is still negative 1 to 1. Well, remember when we were trying to find inverse functions, what we had to do was we had to switch the x and the y. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals sine of y. And of course, once you have the sine of y, you're, or now that we have switched them, the next step is to isolate the new y. Well, how do you isolate something that has a, had a function, an operation, happen to it? We have to do the inverse operation. And so I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides and the inverse sine of the sine of y is equal to y. 
And so the inverse function is equal to the inverse sine of x. But we have to remember that not only did our x and y change places, our domain and range changed places as well. So my new domain is negative 1 to 1, and my new range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay? And so the inverse function is f of inverse function of x is equal to the inverse of sine of x. That's called the inverse function of, of sine of x. But I'm going to swap my values here to where instead of going from negative pi over 2 to 2, pi over 2, I'm going from negative 1 to 1 with 0 in the middle. <coughs> And this value is negative root 2 over 2, and this one is positive root 2 over 2. And the output is now the angle. The output is going to be the angle values. These are in radians. But it's the angle value that we started with. And so when I'm making my graph now, I'm going to be not using from negative 1 to 1 vertically, but negative 1 to 1 horizontally. And vertically, I'm going to be going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And we can still plot our points. I know that negative 1 is at negative pi over 2, 0, 0. Positive 1 is at positive pi over 2. Now let's be careful here because this is 0.7. Negative 0.7 is there. Oops, sorry, negative. And then positive 0.7 is at positive pi over 4. And it looks like this. And if you look at the graph, okay, it does have endpoints because it does stop. We are not continuing it. This graph is the inverse of this graph. All of my x and y values have been reversed. Now, would this graph have been a little bit better had the squares been the same size? Very, very possibly. But remember that pi over 2 is just 1.5 on the scale. And negative pi over 2 is just negative 1.5 on the scale. And we have to realize that these are not special cases. It's not some sort of special setup. It's just a value. Okay, so why are we doing that? Well, what if I asked you to find me the inverse sine of 1 fourth? Well, I now have a place on the graph. I may not know the exact value, but I know that at 1 fourth right here, if the sine value is 1 fourth, that it's going to be somewhere smaller than pi over 4. What if I wanted had a, a sine value of negative two-thirds? It would be approximately negative pi over 4. And the graph is very useful, but it doesn't help in every case. So in those cases, let's look at our unit circle. What are we looking at? We are looking at only quadrants 1 and 4. I'm about to run out of time on my video, so we'll start the next video in just a second. But we are looking only at quadrants 1 and 4. So we are going to restrict our domain to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 with a range of negative 1 to 1. And the inverse sign would be from negative 1 to 1, because that's the values we're going to use, to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for the range.